So here's the dilemma I presented in the previous video. I make an integer i, I assign it to o, which causes o to box the value, and now I want to increment the value referenced by o. In fact, I don't even need to make this integer i. I can just put the literal there, the integer literal, and it will do the upcast and conversion for us. But this is this is an int just as much as that i was, and there we go. Let me um, draw the stack in the heap again. Just to be consistent with what we're doing. Here's the stack, here's the heap, and here is O. O is a reference. It stores the address of a boxed object out here with some meta information up there we're not too worried about. And we have the value 5 in there. And I want to say O++. Well, this is legal for an integer, is it not? I, I can I increment integers all day long, and, and now I'm saying plus plus on O. Well, why am I getting the red squiggly. If I try to build this, let's see what's going on. It says plus plus cannot be applied to operand of type object. But wait a minute, it's it's not an object. It's it's an int. I boxed an int. What's what's going on here? Let me bring that error up again and, and pause it. Well, this is the difference between compile time types and runtime types. We know at runtime it is an int. It's a boxed int. But the compiler, all the compiler sees is that it's an object. Right? OBJ ECT. That's all the compiler knows. Even though the compiler could be clever here, right? The compiler it, it it could analyze and say, hey, that's that's a that's an int. But the compiler doesn't make that assumption. All the compiler can see is this, right? It's like a tab, 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 tab off the screen, and now we see the world as the compiler does. It's object O. O++ plus plus, but plus plus isn't defined for an object. It might be referencing a string. It might be referencing referencing an instance of a main class or whatever you want to do. It's what's plus plus mean? So, so how would we go about incrementing the value five that is sitting in this box out here? Well, first thing we need to do is get the value out, All right? And then we need to add one to it. And then we need to store it back in. Now you may think, okay, let's let's get the value out. We can do that with a downcast, right? We know that O is an int, so let's cast it, and I'll wrap it like that. And there you go. That should modify the value. But oh, Nelly, we get another red squiggly. What's the what's the red squiggly all about here? Let's hover and see. The operand of an increment or decrement operator must be a variable, property, or indexer. This is a variable. What's going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. When you say int o like this, it does the unbox and returns the value. All right? It doesn't allow us to actually get in here. So, so when I say int o, I'm just going to push this plus plus off, off to the right here. Don't even worry about the plus plus for now. Just look at this by itself. Int o. When you say int o, it says, oh, o is an int. We better go make sure that that's an int. Oh, it is an int. All right. Let's cast it out and return the value. So. So basically what happens is is this 5 is copied out as a literal, and it's just there temporarily, um, technically in stack land. I don't want to get into all the details, but the, the 5 shows up. Now, last time I checked in any programming language that I know of, I've heard there's one that does this, but I can't remember what language that is, but I can't say 5 gets 6. All right, that, uh, that doesn't make sense. I'm going to redefine what the value 5 means for my entire program. Boy, that'd be kind of weird if if you were in debt and you wanted to, you know, say you were in debt fifty-two dollars. You could say, okay, well, my negative fifty-two gets a lot of money, and all of a sudden you redefined what it means to be negative fifty-two in the hole. All right. Obviously, we don't want this to happen. And, but that's that's essentially what we're doing here is we're saying, hey, pop the five out, copy it out, and then increment it. All right. Now this is the difference. You might hear the term in computer science an L value versus an R value. An R value is a value you can put on the right. It's a value you can read from. All right? Certainly I can unbox this. Like watch watch this. I can say int j gets int uh, o. I I can unbox it and that'll return a 5. Then I can further assign it to j. So I can read from this, but I definitely cannot write to it. All right? And that's what plus plus does. It's 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 the same as as uh saying this gets itself plus one. All right. Now an L value is something you can write to. For example, I say int j, and that will give me RAM. All right. That will give me a place I can store a value. 
right? It can go on the left side. It's the L value. It's it's something on the left side. I can store a value there, like five, like so. All right. So when I say int O plus plus, yeah, that unboxes it. That returns returns the five. But there's no memory there. It's just a value. All right. And so I certainly cannot increment it. Hopefully, hopefully that's starting to make sense. Let me get rid of uh, J. I think we're done with J. And I hope that that made sense. Let me put the five out here. Magic value. Well, I'm trying to change the value in this box. Okay. I don't. That's cool that we got a copy. But how do I change the value in the box? Well, let's see. Let's let's first get the value out. So I don't want the five to disappear. Let's store it temporarily. So let's say int temp gets int o. So that'll do the unbox, and all this will return the box value, which is five. And then let's say uh, o gets temp plus one. Certainly, that should store the value that temp is referring to. It should add one to it and store it in O. Well, I got bad news. <laughs> if you look at the previous video and you kind of examine this and think about it for a minute, you'll say, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jamie did something like this in the previous video. This is an integer. This returns an integer value. Okay. And again, it's not something I can assign to. So out comes a 6. This returns a 6. So it's literally the exact same as saying, oh, get six. But I showed you when you assign a value type to a reference type, the runtime has to say, oh, okay, let's make another box. Here's the box with some meta information in there I'll talk about in a future video. Uh, we'll box the six up. Okay, we're done with this temporary value. And then, oh, instead of referencing the six, oh, well instead, or not the 6, instead of referencing the 5, it will reference the 6. Okay, well, yes, we changed, we incremented the value that O was boxed to. Right, I can put this, I can put our temp plus 1 in here again. Yes, we did increment it, but we didn't increment the actual value in the box. We had to create a new box. Alright, so with value types like this, there's absolutely no way for us to modify this value. In doing so, we inadvertently created a new box. And what we call this is immutable. The value inside of the box is immutable. You can't change it. Right? I could certainly have another reference to it. I could say object another O gets O. Alright, so then that would place another O right here, A O, and it could reference that box, but I still can't change this value directly. Anyway, that's one little caveat about boxing, and in future videos we're going to, uh, there, there's a bunch of other stuff. Do you need to know it? Chances are no. Is it interesting? Yeah, I think so. But purely I think it's just more educational than anything. If uh, The more you know if this stuff bites you, which chances are it could and it would, then certainly um, you're, you're more than free to watch the future videos on boxing. One other little thing before I quit this video is uh, boxing is true for all value types. I I think we had like struct fraction, I believe, in the previous videos. And int numerator, int denominator, and I can I can uh, create a fraction instance on the stack, my frac. Then I can say O gets my frac. Well, there's nothing special about fraction to int. It still requires boxing. What's wrong here? Oh, I have to zero out all the bits. Remember that from the previous video. I need to either assigned all the data members or zero of them out and that's what this will do. Anyway, let me just draw this, what's going to happen. Maybe we've got a little less RAM in our computer this time. I'll draw it shorter. Stack heap. Alright, we have my frac, which contains two integers. Okay, this is my frac sitting on the stack. And then I say O, which is this reference here. Here's O and O oh, well O can't reference this struct instance on the stack has to reference the heap so so what happens well the runtime again says let's box this All right here's our box All right and the meta information about what's inside the box and all that stuff I'll talk about in future videos right there and then my frac well we zeroed it out didn't we so then here's the pieces of my frac these are zeros I'll draw a line through them make them look more zero-ish okay but then this O is now referencing this box. And the same thing, to unbox it, I have to do the cast if I want. Uh, fraction, another frac, 
gets, well, let's do the unbox, fraction, my frac. Okay, well, next video.